Hello there, friend and fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. You've got Bill today, and I have wanted a replica of Vash the Stampede's revolver from the show Trigun for love, love and peace. peace. I've wanted one for 20 years now. I saw it when I was a, a freshman in college, and I fell in love with uh, the characters and the show, and I also kind of have a thing for big, chunky revolvers. So I've wanted one of these for 20 years, and I'm finally, finally making one for myself. Not, not this one, this one's just cardboard, but I'm gonna make a prop. Yeah. <laughs> like my Blade Runner blaster, eh? I am going to 3D print this gun. And just like my Blade Runner blaster, I'm gonna sell the files so that you can buy them, download them at home, and print your own copy. I started this journey by re-watching all of Trigun again, which was fantastic. And whenever the gun showed up on screen, I would use OBS to capture a clip of every moment when it showed up. Then I went through all of those clips frame by frame so that I could grab really good images of the gun from multiple angles. This way I could sort of piece together in my head what this thing would look like in 3D space. Now the specific design of this gun changes from shot to shot and episode to episode. So I had a little bit of artistic license to work with here. I used all the information that I gathered to be able to draw a side view of the gun. This is what I think it should look like. I printed that side view out in a variety of scales to figure out roughly how big it ought to be. And then I spray glued it to some cardboard so that I could hold it, and see if it felt good in the hand. Once I was happy with the size and the design, I could get to work with my 3D modeling. I'm doing all of my modeling for this project with the program I use most of the time, Fusion 360, and I started with the most complicated part, because that's just how I roll. I'm starting, of course, with the mechanism for the trigger and hammer. I have an Airsoft revolver that I like to use for scale references, but it also has all of the mechanisms that I want. When you pull the trigger, the hammer goes, and the cylinder revolves, and I wanted to make sure those were both included in my model. So I cracked that sucker open and just straight up copied the mechanism. Even though I was working from a reference, it did take me a couple of tries to get it right. Here are some of my very first prints of the mechanical doodads here, and I'm gonna put them all together and see how well they work. You can see version three, this isn't, this isn't my first, first try, and I'm sure it's not gonna be my last, but we're gonna put it all together uh, and do a little test. This is the spring for the hammer. It's similar to the way I did it actually on this gun. And that gets snuck in there. And that should hold the hammer up. Very good. On the hammer we have this little catch with a spring on it and that's gonna get attached with a screw. A very tiny screw. For the 3D files I'm selling of this, I'll have a list of all the screws and springs so you know what to purchase to build your own. That's just what we want. So far, so good. Um, this is a 1 8 inch pin that's going to hold the trigger. Before the trigger goes in, this, this guy has to go in. It's important that this goes in first. Oh, that needs a spring as well. This is what locks the cylinder from rotating freely. I have a little spring for that as well. I think one of the things I need to change is that, well, this is magnetic, great. <laughs> I need to make this spring shorter or, or lower the gap. I'm, I'm, this is for my benefit. <laughs> I need to fix, update this model. Uh, but that's why we do these tests, so we learn these things. There we go. So that's just kind of loose, loosely held in there with the spring. Very good, now we can put our trigger on. And the trigger has this mechanism, which rotates the cylinder and it also has a spring. Uh, I do think I'm gonna change this to a torsion spring though, because I need a little more room in there. But that fits like that. And our mechanism should be all set. So when I pull this back, it should, yes, do exactly what I need it to do. That's awesome. This part um, is meant to get rotated like that and then pushed out of the way. And it only really works when the other side is held in place by the uh, cover plate here. That little slot is what runs it. So if I put this on, hopefully that will all move correctly. So when I pull the trigger, the hammer should go. This little nubbin should push up and that should dip down and back up. 
Oh, we got a little binding in there. I know what I forgot. I forgot a spring. This is important. The trigger needs a spring so that it has something pushing it. There we go. It needs a little something pushing it back down. That's what I was missing. And here we go. Yeah, that is awesome. That's exactly what we want. Now I won't know how well this pusher and this catch here work until I have more of the gun assembled and I can see if the cylinder actually rotates, but this is very promising and <laughs> makes me very happy after having printed several of these parts several times. Speaking of the cylinder, here's what I've got for the cylinder. It actually took me a couple of tries. I bought some dummy bullets. Again, I have the same thing in my uh, Blade Runner gun. These are actually different. There we go. Let's show them off. So slightly different because of course Vash uses a 45 caliber bullet and I modeled these so that this would fit. It did take me a couple of tries to get the diameter right because even though I put in a specific diameter in Fusion, the print shrinks a tiny bit. But I did figure it out and these bullets are all going to go in like that. Now what's great is I can also use this to help scale this when I'm 3D modeling and I'm pretty confident that this is a good scale. It's also a really nice weight. I only have this done so far. We can see how that looks, which is great. But I don't have the rest of it done to be able to test that. So better get back to Fusion and do some more modeling and printing. <laughs> that tickles me every time. I'm back at the computer working in Fusion 360 on my model. Um, I've made some progress and some changes on the parts that I'm going to be printing again. Uh, but I want to show you a really great feature. I can insert a model from the McMaster car catalog. These guys, probably the best place to go get hardware like screws and stuff. Uh, so for the screws that I want to put to hold on this cover plate here, uh, I can go look in the catalog and they do a great job of uh, giving you the option to pick based on a number of variables. So. I know from trial and error that I need a, a 632 screw, so that eliminates a whole bunch of stuff for me. Um, the length of it, let's say, I'm going to just guess here, 3 8 or something like that. Sounds pretty good. Half an inch, there it is. 3 8 sure. And then uh, I want them all to be, all the screws on this to be slotted, so that eliminates a bunch more stuff. And then let's just go with uh, steel for the material. Go down here and pick. The head style, let's just do let's do flat for the head type. Um, and then uh, yeah, so that'll be countersunk. That's what I want. And right hand, yeah. Oh, so I, I only have one option. So um, after picking all that stuff, I'm left with just this one screw. And I could order right here if I want. I can order them in packs of 100. And 100 pack is 269. That seems like a pretty good deal. But if I click on product detail, I get a picture of it, which is great. All the information I need, the product number, which I want to write all that down. And um, I've got a, a drawing here, which so I can confirm this is totally the screw that I want. But even better, if I scroll down here and make sure that this is set to 3D step and hit save, it will dump a 3D model of that screw into my drawing here. Um, so let's say I'm going to use that over here. So let's go on our right view. Move that down. Actually, we'll want to rotate it in the correct orientation here. Say 90 degrees. That looks good. Go back to the right view and I can, I can kind of center it there. Um, let's put that cover plate back on. So this, is, this screw is going to hold that cover plate in place. Uh, and I can put it kind of roughly where it's going to be in the final model and hit OK. And I can see right now that the chamfer I made is not is not wide enough. I can also, um, let's remove the cover plate there, check and see, um, even if I grab that. There we go. I can see that the hole is deep enough for that screw. Um, it's a little undersized, which is fine because um, that's going to have to get tapped in there. But the hole on the cover plate is going to have to be a little bit bigger. So I can hide that screw 
the hole that this cover plate goes through um, needs to be big enough for the threads to fit through without clipping and then the chamfer needs to a little bit be a little bit wider so those are changes I can make to my model so that I know when I order those screws and they show up they will fit perfectly which is awesome so I'm going over this whole model and inserting models of the screws that I'm gonna need uh, in fact I've been keeping a list here of all the screws and springs that I'm gonna need so that I can order them but also so that I can give you that information so you can order all the hardware you'll need to put together the 3d model yourself it's just a really awesome feature that's in Fusion 360, and um, I've been enjoying using it quite a bit. And I think the way that they allow you to pick your hardware based on a bunch of variables makes it a lot easier to find something you may not know exactly what you need. It's here. I got all my stuff from McMaster Car. Look at this bounty of springs and screws. Now this is obviously way more screws than I need, but some of these things only come in packs of a hundred. So that's what I've got, a hundred screws. I mean, this was like three or four bucks for a hundred of them, so it actually wasn't that much and I have plenty left over. Uh, these are the screws and then I have a whole bunch of springs for the mechanisms, including these torsion springs that are really tiny and adorable. Also in the last few days while I waited for all my screws to show up, I pretty much finished and printed the whole model. Now there are a couple of things I want to change. I did this little dovetail experiment here that's not going to work. Uh, so I've omitted that and I need to reprint this piece. But I can start test fitting a lot of these pieces with the screws I have now. Also, I have this eighth inch thick steel rod and I'm going to cut this into little segments like this little piece here, and that'll be used on certain spots on the gun to sort of pin pieces together. So one of them will go there, which will pin this part on, and they will eventually be glued, but I'll do all that after it's been painted. Uh, I also want to point out that this is not my first try on all of these. In fact, most of these pieces have been printed a couple of times. This is my bin of trial and error, uh, all pieces that um, either failed in the print in some way or uh, ended up not working and had to be changed and printed again. There are still a couple more pieces that need test uh, printing like that, but I'm close enough now that I can see how most everything fits together with all my new hardware. These holes are where these pins are gonna go, but they're a little bit undersized. I want them to be snug, so I model them a little undersized and then I have a 1 8 inch bit and I can very carefully widen the holes. It's very possible to split a 3D print if you're not careful. There we go. That's what we're aiming for. So I can drill the rest of these out and then do a little test fit up. I just drilled that out and I have this little chamfer bit that I can use to clean that up. And that should help make sure that the uh, pin goes in there nice and easily. Yeah. Uh, this is the front, very good. And that fits the, oh, that's a satisfying snap. And like I said, these will all get glued together, but the pins make sure that they're in the correct location. Uh, now I've got other parts here uh, that go in there and I gotta drill those out as well. And this one I think goes, oh, so satisfying. So it's mostly that for a lot of this. Here's the sort of plant module. Need to drill that out. Here's the little parts that go on either side of it there. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna sell these files so you can print them yourself at home. And I'll have a list of all the hardware here if you wanna go buy all the parts. You could just glue it all together if you don't want moving parts. But I will have a list of all the springs and screws and everything I used. Uh, and of course, eighth inch steel rod you can get from the hardware store. And, I'm going to make a separate video that's just a pure instructional uh, assembly video to show how to put all this stuff together in excruciating detail. So you can go watch that too. For cutting these, I'm just going to use a normal little hacksaw here. It's pretty quick. Ta da! <laughs> it worked a lot better in the big, in the big vise. <laughs> There's some jagged bits on there, so I'm just going to use the sander to clean that up. Uh, 
These, this is the plant module. These are the little doodads on the end of the plant module. Eventually those will all get glued into place. But this all rests in there. Ooh, <laughs> so cool. Uh, this part here has its own pin that gets going on in there. This is kind of like the hinge part that holds a lot of this together. This is the part I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this dovetail in a future version, but it, it kind of works like that. And it kind of, yeah, that looks awesome. So instead of that dovetail, I'm just gonna put a pair of pins. That'll be way easier. Uh, this is a little decoration on the end. <laughs> it's like the whole front of the gun. And then this, this is the part that covers it. And it should be nice and snug. I may have to sand some of these parts so that they fit better. Um, I realize that these pieces here, I didn't build in any sort of clearance, so they're a little too snug. I want this to be able to pop off. Right now, I'm just gonna sand this, but I will go and update this 3D model, make it a little more slender, uh, and then print new ones. But I'm fixing them now because I wanna see what this looks like when it gets all put together. Uh, but this is basically what I've been doing for the last few days, my prototyping. Print some pieces out, try and fit them together, update when necessary, and print again. Yes! Oh, how good does that look? Oh, that's so cool. Now, I designed this so that these holes, these three on top, are going to be purely decorative. I have... Um, some shorty screws. These short screws are gonna go in there. I'll show that in a moment. But these screws here are gonna be longer and they're gonna screw into, well, let's see if I can get this to come apart now. See, this is why I need to add that clearance. They're way too snug. I'm gonna thread that hole all the way through on both sides. Same thing with the one over there so that I can screw it in and it'll stay on. And then I can unscrew it and pop it off if I want to display it with the plant module exposed. Oh, this is, this is very exciting. I've been working on this, 3D modeling this for like two weeks now, and this is the first time I've had to put all these parts together. And I'm just getting really, getting a little emotional. I wanna glue these all together, but I know I need to go fix these. <sighs> hey, let's show, let's show the, the screws. That'll be a fun thing to do next. So I have a little 632 tap here to put some threads in. You can be fairly aggressive on plastic with those things, uh, but that should make this fit, and it does. Now, I've updated this model so that it has a deeper countersink for the heads here, and uh, I just haven't reprinted it again, so I just have to go print this part again. But the, the screws fit, and they look good. They don't stick out on the other side, which is why I got them so short. That is awesome. I've been working on the sort of reload arm that unlocks the gun so it can be reloaded. And I've hit a bit of a snag. So this, this is a shell that covers everything. And there's this little tab with a hole through it so I can screw it into the side here. And this lever is supposed to go in there, and pivot around that, that round part. But uh, there is no way to get that in there. <laughs> in the 3D model, uh, it was a piece of cake because those pieces can just intersect each other. But this. This one doesn't fit at all. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go back to the 3D model and figure out a better way to do that. It happens. This is prototyping. Some time has passed and I have printed new parts, better parts, parts that are definitely going to work. So the, the sort of stem part that was there, I made uh, so that I can take it apart like that. And I'm going to glue that together. And the order of operations matters here. I'm gonna get a little glue in there. That's more than a little glue, Bill. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I have the correct part. Um, this is the correct part, like that. And I'm going to glue it together. Now, I have decided that this, this gun is a prototype. Normally, I would probably sand all these pieces before uh, this kind of assembly. But this is gonna be an unpainted prototype. So I'm going to assemble it now as a test to see how it works. Hopefully that's in there for, for good. That looks good. That should slot in like that. Oh, that's satisfying. 
And then the screws should go in there, and I've, I've threaded the holes they go in, so that should just go like that. Yes. I'm, I'm just so excited. In it goes. There we go. <laughs> that's totally how that's supposed to fit. Awesome. And then when you push this, the, uh, the mechanism latches on, and then when you push that, it can open. Although I'm seeing a new problem. Can you, Britt, can you tell me what the problem is with this arrangement? I'll show you when I pull the trigger. Oh no. <laughs> the, the hammer is now obscured. So the original in the, in the gun had a gap here from the, from the TV show. I connected it because that was the easiest way to get both of these levers to move at the same time. So I need to move the hammer back a little bit. I need to modify this part. So I'll go work on that 3D model and someday I'll be able to <laughs> actually shoot it. Uh, I did update some other parts though that I want to show you. These parts I updated, I made them a little thinner so that the cover part goes over very easily. Uh, and then screws will go in to hold it in place. So that part, I mean, this is, look at that. This is all, all coming together. Uh, and then to attach these two pieces, I have this threaded standoff with a screw that goes in either end. These go together like that. Threaded standoff goes in like that. There we go. Screw goes on the other side. There we go. Oh, that's not screwed in yet. Okay, so I need springs to hold this closed like that, but that holds the gun closed. And then when I push this here, it pops open. Hey! <laughs> that's like the whole freaking gun right there. I got a, a little butt cap that goes on, but that's like all the parts. And it looks like, I think it looks really good. I'm so happy with this. Oh, it makes noises when you spin it. I'm very excited about that. Okay, obviously one or two little things I need to tweak. Uh, so I'm gonna head back to the computer, do those updates, print a few new parts. In fact, I'm gonna probably print this whole thing again uh, in ABS plastic, this is all in PLA. I did that as sort of a prototype because I know most folks at home who wanna, will wanna print these files, probably are gonna print them in PLA. Uh, but I'm gonna print my final version in ABS just because it's so much easier to sand. And then I'll get to assembling and painting this whole thing. But I'm gonna just take a moment right now to bask in how awesome this is. The scale feels right, it opens, it spins. And if this part wasn't here, then the trigger would actually work. <laughs> Before I head back to the computer, I actually made a list of all the changes I want to make. A lot of little tweaks that I need to make on this thing before I print these parts again. This is how I've been doing my prototyping. I'll make a few parts, test them, and then make a list of all the changes I want to make before I go back to the computer. This keeps things organized and this makes sure I get everything done before I print a part and realize I have to change something on it and print it again. So yeah, lists everybody, lists are the way to go. It has been several days and many updates to all my files, but I have come to my finished pieces here. I did do this whole prototype on this guy. This is all PLA plastic. Tested, make sure everything worked out. And then I went and printed everything again using ABS because I like sanding ABS a lot better than I like sanding PLA plastic. Uh, now I started this project like a month and a half ago. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work off camera, mostly 3D modeling and prototyping. Um, it's been kind of a nights and weekends kind of project, passion project, and I've been really, really into it and I've gotten to a place that I'm very happy with. Uh, I just filmed an assembly video. I have a full set of assembly instructions for the files that I'm gonna be selling of this blaster so you can put yours uh, together following along with me at home. So that'll be a separate video. Uh, but now, now is the time for me to finish my gun. And that means a lot of elbow grease, a lot of sanding, and making these parts all smooth so we can paint them shiny like to match what they look like in the anime.
The main goal with sanding is to get rid of mostly the uh, sort of stair-stepping look that we have on our prints that comes with all FDM prints. Uh, and then like smooth or flat surfaces like this need to be flattened out. Um, I'm gonna start with like a 220 grit sandpaper, uh, but I've got these diamond uh, needle files in a variety of shapes that are super handy. They're roughly 200 grit themselves, uh, and I can use those to start knocking down those lines. And that's what I'm gonna go for for all of these pieces to get them as smooth as possible before we work our way up to the grits. Nothing too fancy here, just a lot of elbow grease and time until I'm happy with the finish on, uh, on all my parts. So we'll start, start with these, some of these small guys and then work our way up to the big ones and until we're, uh, we're all sick of sanding. We let our uh, primer dry overnight, so it's nice and dry. And now we're going over everything with some wet sanding. This is a 600 grit that we're using to get a nice smooth finish on there, make sure there are no more layer lines. Uh, we're gonna end up painting this sort of a chrome finish, nice shiny finish. We wanna make sure it's as smooth as possible. Not gonna go too crazy, no 2000 grit or anything, but 600 should be pretty good. Got all our pieces here on, on sticks. Uh, it's super helpful for painting. You can just take the piece and spray paint it, hold it at a bunch of different angles and then put it back where it goes. Uh, it's also great for drying, a lot of airflow around all the parts. We actually have an overhead fan that we can turn on that helps everything dry really fast. So the next step for me and for Britt, who's been helping an awful lot with the sanding, is just to wet sand all of these pieces to a nice 600 grit. This part here has some text on it, you can see right there. This is what I printed before this one, and I printed this flat down on the bed, and the text there almost completely filled in and disappeared. So I reprinted it, only I printed it upright with the bed like that uh, for this piece, and that left uh, the text looking eh, pretty good, pretty good, uh, looking kind of like, like this piece here, which is also printed vertically. Uh, however, it could be a little bit deeper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my rotary tool with this pointy little bit on there, carve that out a tiny bit. That's what I did on this one already, just to make that a little more pronounced. There we go, that looks pretty good. Not too concerned with the text because in the show it, it jumps around dramatically. <laughs> in fact, uh, they misspelled double uh, in the double action. Time for black. We're going to base coat everything in black using Tamiya, and I've thinned it a little bit with their thinner so I can run it through my airbrush and spray on a nice even coat. I'm starting with a dust coat. I'm covering everything, but I'm not putting a lot of paint on. We'll do another wet coat after this, but this first one is just enough to get coverage. We've waited for all the parts to dry for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, and now we're gonna do our wet coat over that dust coat. 
So same thing, same paint. I'm just putting a lot more on until I get a really glossy finish. Nice and shiny. Today is the next day. Our black paint is nice and dry and it's time for the metallic coat that's gonna go over that. For that, I will be airbrushing the Spazstix Mirror Chrome on all the parts except for the grips. Those are gonna stay black, these fellas right here. And uh, I want them to have more of a matte finish. So I've got a matte clear spray paint and that'll go on there. Uh, everything else is gonna get protected once it has its chrome with this uh, clear gloss, aqua gloss from uh, All Clad that does a good job of protecting all the uh, chrome paint uh, without dulling it too much. So I'm gonna head over to the airbrush station and lay down some chrome. Shiny and chrome? Shiny and chrome. Don't don't drink this. Here Alexa, stop. It is time for assembly. I've been waiting for this moment for months and I'm so excited. I've got all my hardware ready, all my nuts and bolts, or I guess I don't have any nuts, screws and springs. Uh, I've got some glue here and I also cut a bunch of pins. These are all cut out of 1 8 inch uh, steel rod. These are gonna be used to align and glue some of the parts together. Let's dive right in. Why wait? My parts are all shiny, looking great. We actually came in over the weekend, sanded them again, and painted them again. Didn't film it, but uh, I just wasn't totally happy with the finish. I'm much happier with it now, and Brittany helped a ton, so thanks, Britt. Boop. Uh, time for assembly. Like I said, I've got these pins here, and they are designed to go in their respective holes, like so. Perfectly aligned, nice and snug and ready for the glue up. Uh, these holes, like holes like that, those are about an eighth of an inch. So if uh, they're a little snug, you can just drill them out with a uh, normal eighth inch drill bit. But I'm ready to start slinging some goo. I've got my epoxy here. I've got some super glue as well. So let's get started. I'm gonna super glue the ends of it. Assembly's going great so far. Everything's been glued, but it's time to use some screws. These screws up here are purely decorative. They don't actually go all the way through, so they're a little bit shorter. But these ones, those line up with the holes behind them, like so. And these holes have been tapped with the appropriate size tap. It's a uh, 632. And these slightly longer screws go through this top part 
like that, and they screw in there, thus making this top part removable so that you can decide how you want to display your revolver with or without the plant module showing. I am, of course, going to attach them. And those will hold that in. I'll do the other side as well, but you can see that completes the look. The top sight part here does a bit of heavy lifting, so it gets two rods down the length of it there that go all the way down to fully support this part. 3D printed pieces really are not that strong. There we go. Oh, that's satisfying. This part here has to hold the gun closed, so it definitely needs that extra bit of structure there. This is the axle for the cylinder. So that can go in next, and that just gets glued. This also got a steel rod put down the middle of it to make it a lot stronger. That was just snugged down in there. Didn't get painted, didn't need any paint. And that goes right in here. Make sure it's nice and straight. Feeling good about that, we'll let that cure. Okay, set that aside. Time to work on this half, the complicated half. A couple more eighth inch steel rods that go where the trigger goes. I might put a little super glue on that. Yeah, it's a little loose. Let's super glue that. Just enough to hold it in place. The trigger gets this little arm put on it with a little torsion spring and to give it a little force to hold it closed. And then there's this teeny little screw that holds it together. During the process of this, I have taken this apart and put it back together many times. So that forces that down, which is exactly what we want. Before that can go in though, this little part needs to go in and that locks the cylinder and unlocks it. So that goes in there, yeah, like that. Feels a little snug. I might have to finesse that and sand that. I may have to take this apart a couple of times, in fact to get everything working correctly, but this is generally how that goes. Looks pretty good. Then the hammer is next. That also gets a little screw with a torsion spring on it, this little catch here. Wait, that goes like this. Too tight. That's what we want. And then that can go Actually, that has to go in before the trigger so that it can do that. To get that to go, we need this fella, another little 3D printed part with a eighth inch uh, steel rod and a spring. Those go in there and that pushes the hammer back so that when I do this, it does that. Then to get this uh, trigger to come back, we need a couple more springs. Uh, these are two little springs that I stacked up. I couldn't get the right <laughs> strength of spring, so instead I'm doubling them up. There we go. Two springs stuck together like that to return the trigger. Fabulous. Okay. You stay down there. Okay, now I can close this up. That's a little snug. I'm going to drill that out. Some more of these 632 screws to close it all up. There we go. <laughs> it does it. It does the thing. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, okay, let's do the grips. Let's do the grips. That fit on there all nice and snug like? Ooh, yeah. Let's see, we got some more screws for that. Some of these bigger, these ones have bigger heads. Whew, okay, let's do this side. So snug. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> That's on there. This goes on like that. There's little keys to hold it in place. Oh. There we go. Boy, 
That looks good. Time for this part. Ah, so exciting. Okay, got to glue these parts in with these guys in like that. I'm saying that mostly for my own benefit. A little bit of glue in there. Let's use pliers. There we go. That should hold that in place and let it rotate. This whole arrangement goes over there and then gets screwed into place. So this is all removable. I can take this all apart. And I might need to to kind of tweak everything. Now I need to stuff this spring in there. Oh, there we go. Fabulous. Cylinder can go on there then to hold it. I have this tiny little piece, teeny tiny little piece with a little screw. It goes just like that. And that just keeps that from uh, coming off. Now this goes like that. I gotta tinker with that part. I'm gonna have to tinker with a lot of this, but let's, let's put it all together. I've got a uh, threaded standoff here that's gonna act as my hinge. All together now. All together now. There, nice and easy. And on the other side, we can screw this in. There we go. And that closes up like that. It's done. Well, almost done. Uh, there are some little bits of the mechanism I need to tweak, it looks like. Uh, and I gotta tweak this part up here. But, but for the most part, that's pretty well done. I do wanna do a tiny bit of weathering. So I'm gonna do some tinkering, and then we'll get to weathering. Took everything apart and put it back together about a dozen more times to get everything working correctly. Figured out that uh, I was using the wrong size screw, which was blocking some of the mechanism, but uh, that has been resolved. We are good to go on the weathering. So I've got some of my water mixable oil paints. Got a little water here to thin it just a bit. I don't need to grime this up too much. Fash seems to take pretty good care of his sidearm. But I do want to get some grime down in all the details just to sort of show off the contrast and everything. Especially like, let's start with this text. Really just focusing on spots where there's detail, like the screw heads. And we can just wipe that off. Get a little bit of grime sticking around. Not, not a ton, just a little bit. That looks pretty fabulous. There we go with the plant module exposed, everything all weathered. Yeah, I'll fix that part right there. Looks good. Then this part gets attached on top there, actually. There's a little bit of smudging on the back of that there. Let's fix that. Fix that. Okay, then the top part goes on just like that. So like I said before, I'm gonna sell the 3D files for this. There'll be a link down below. I also made an instructional video on how to assemble everything. And I have diagrams to help you out putting it all together. Very excited about my diagram. These little screws here just hold this top section in place. You could even probably do magnets if you wanted to give that a shot. I'm excited to see people printing their own and doing their own handiwork on all of this. I also filmed like a diary when I was putting this whole thing together and that's gonna be available to our extra credit members over on Patreon and right here on our memberships on YouTube. Just a little follow along while I was putting this whole project together. If you want to go check that out. So thank you extra credit members for helping support us over the last few years. And I hope you enjoy those uh, video diaries. The very last step is to add some ammo. These are dummy bullets that I bought from a dummy bullet website. Uh, I've also included some 3D printable ones uh, in the files for this fella here. 
But I'm gonna use the dummy bullets because they look so cool. So legit. Yeah. There it is. Almost 20 years in the making. And it does all the things. How cool is that? My Vash Stampede revolver is all done and I could not be more proud. Thank you so much for watching, hanging out with us in the shop today. Thank you, Brittany, for all the help. You're, You're wonderful. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh wait, one more thing, one more thing. Ready? It does that. How good is that? <laughs>